a good commuter bike is a dependable bicycle that makes you excited about your commute every time you have to ride to work or to run an errand. Even on a Monday morning, even if you don't like your job, even on a wet and windy day, I've had the chance to test out several bicycles over the years and I found that there are four characteristics that every good commuter bike has. Four characteristics only and everything else doesn't matter. If you're still looking for a commuter, well then stay to learn some insights and if you already found your perfect commuter, then stay and share your wisdom. I had a loner bike for the first month of my bike commuting career and that loner bike was quite simple. It didn't have high-end components, it wasn't lightweight, it was quite old as well. So when I walked into the bike shop where I bought my commuter and I had that bike with me, I sort of wanted to, uh, well not disown it, but I didn't, um, I wasn't very proud of it, let's put it that like that. So I asked the guy at the bike shop, I said, well look, I am trying to buy a new commuter which obviously needs to be better than this thing here. So the guy looked at the bike and he said, but what's wrong with this bike? And then he showed me a few options and I didn't go with the options that he showed me. I went with this bike instead. This is the Merida Speeder a fitness bike, which is a really nice bike and I still love it very much to this very day. But I had to do a few modifications on it to make it into the perfect commuter. And it turns out that several years later, the bicycle that I took with me on that very first occasion was the perfect commuter. So what are those four characteristics? Well, the first one is that it needs to be a comfortable bicycle. This is essential. You cannot ride a bike on a regular basis that you do not find comfortable. And comfortable means two things. First of all, of course, it needs to be your size. You cannot be riding a bicycle that is too big for you or too small for you. It's going to cause pains and aches and discomfort and you will not want to ride it. But comfortable also means that it's a type of bicycle that is suited for the type of commute you have. So for example, if you ride through forest roads, you need a mountain bike or you need uh, a good hybrid bike with suspension, a front suspension and quite wide tires. But if you are a city commuter, then you can ride a single speed bike, you can ride a city bike, a Dutch style bike, you can even ride a folding bike. There's a variety of bikes that you can ride in the city. If you have a very long commute and you want to go quite fast, then you need a road bike or a gravel bike, something that allows you to go faster, something that is a little bit more efficient. So you have to think a little bit about the commute that you have in order to determine the bike you need. Guys, comfort triumphs looks and comfort triumphs speed. Make sure you've got a comfortable bike for your ride. The second characteristic of a good commuter is that it's a practical bike. And practical means that it's set up for your specific needs. If you live in a wet and muddy area, then you need fenders or mud guards. If you want to commute with panniers, then you need a rear rack. If your roads are pretty bad quality, then you need thicker tires. If you ride at night or on busy roads, you're gonna need lights. If you ride a lot at night and you don't want to charge your batteries, then you're going to need maybe dynamo hubs. So you're gonna have to put a little bit of thinking into personalizing and optimizing your bike for your ride to make it as comfortable and as practical as possible. I love seeing commuters with what seem to be crappy bikes from outside, but you see that the guy puts so much attention into making that bike his very own bike and every single detail uh, from the fenders to the rack to the bottle cage and everything tailor-made for that rider and you see that the, that the rider and the bike age together and they form this union and it's great to see that. The third characteristic of a good commuter is that it's low maintenance. And guys, if you buy a bicycle that is high maintenance, you're not going to want to ride it 
after a few weeks when you say, oh gosh, you ha I have to fix it again or I have to uh, maintain it again, I have to pamper it again. There are two types of bikes that fall into this high maintenance category. The very cheap bikes that you buy in department stores. I've been there, I bought a few of them. Let me actually show you what I mean. This bicycle here is a seven year old department store bike that I bought brand new. Now this has less miles in its entire lifetime in it than my main commuter sitting right there in a good month. So this is already giving me problems. It's been giving me problems since the very beginning. The wheel is loose because the, there are some broken bearings in the rear hub. The bottom bracket is loose, so the pedal is loose. The shifting is imprecise and it needs to be indexed regularly. The gear range is actually very small, so I can't climb very steep hills and I spin out of gears very easily. So when I go downhill or on a flat road, then I can't switch to a high enough gear to go fast. And it's just not a very comfortable bike. Does it work? Yes, it does. Is it fun to ride? Not so much. Is it good as a commuter? It's terrible. And if you use your bike maybe once a year or twice a year, then yeah, by all means, go and get a department store bike. But if you want to rely on it and use it and make sure that it's a dependable bike, then a department store bike is just not the way to go. The other end of the spectrum is also usually high maintenance. Once you get into the several thousand dollars territory, uh, those bikes also tend to have parts that require regular maintenance. And also, if you put a lot of money into a bike, then you don't want to uh, just not maintain it. Now, I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't maintain your bike at all. Of course, you need to clean and lube your chains every now and then, and you have to uh, sometimes replace the chain and replace the cassette or tighten bolts. So yeah, by all means, do that. Um, grease the hubs. But if your bicycle requires uh, attention several times a week, then it's not going to be a very practical bike to ride. Now the fourth characteristic of a good commuter is that you're not worried of locking it up when you go to work or when you enter a store and you lock it up outside. It's really annoying and it's, it causes so much frustration when you enter a place and you have to leave your bike outside and it's constantly on your mind. And when does that happen? That happens when the bike is just too expensive or too good looking for the neighborhood where you need to lock it up. So if you work in a high crime area, then a crappy bike or a crappy looking bike is a lot better than a nice looking bike. Of course, you can improve your chances of finding your bike where you left it if you invest in a decent lock and if you learn how to lock it up properly and where to lock it up. But there is no such a thing as an unbreakable lock, unfortunately. Now, this is one of the reasons why the 90s mountain bikes are still so popular to this day for commuting. I mean, they tick almost all the boxes. In fact, they tick all the boxes. They are comfortable. If you set them up, if you get the right size, they're comfortable for a variety of commutes, like different types of commutes. You can put drop bars on them and you can make them fast and put skinnier tires so you can make them faster. Or they can also endure some off-road riding. Uh, they're also practical beca because they can be accessorized in a variety of ways and they also have uh, brazens for racks and fenders so they're really practical from that point of view as well. They are low maintenance because they have stood the test of time. Often they are made of steel which is really both comfortable and low maintenance and also because they're not very expensive people are not worried of leaving them locked up outside. But this is my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion, especially if you are a bike commuter and if you have tested different types of bikes and different types of setups, what is your setup like and what does your ideal commuter look like? And maybe is there a characteristic that you think I should have included 
in this list. Let me know in the comments below and if you like this kind of content, hit the like button and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care, bye bye.